Good evening. I'm Armando Coya, President of the West Coya ISD Board of Trustees. This regular board meeting is being conducted in compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. Notice of this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. The board is meeting by the use of Google Meets and telephone transmission, which allows two-way communication for members of the public during public comments. A recording of this meeting is being made and will be available to the public at a later date. The time now is 540 and I call this meeting to order. I'll now begin the roll call. Call the next board member by name. Signify your presence by saying I or present when I call your name. Mr. Isidoro Nieto. Present. Mr. Jackie Sustaita. Present. Coach Jesse Trevino. Present. Mr. Jaime, Dr. Jaime Rodriguez. Mr. Mark de los Santos. Mr. Andrew Gonzalez. Myself, Armando Cuellar. Let the record show that a quorum of board members are in attendance. Item three, invocation. Dr. Coronel. Uh, board President and members of the board, I'd like to turn this over to Mr. Carlos Cervelli. Good evening, Dr. Coronado, President Cuellar, members of the board. I'd like to introduce Ms. Jeannie Silva, star <clears throat> teacher at Airport Drive Elementary, who will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you to thank you for another day of life. As we prepare to celebrate Thanksgiving next week, let us reflect and be thankful for all the blessings you have given us. The blessing of our loving families, wonderful friends, and the blessing of having one of the greatest honor, which is educating and caring for our wonderful West Laco ISD students. Lord Jesus, bless them. Lord Jesus, we also ask that you always allow us to be amazing examples of your love, your peace, and your kindness. Father God, we also ask a special prayer upon our distinguished Westlaco ISD Board of Trustees and our super superintendent, Dr. Coronado. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Bless them with much wisdom, strength, unity, and leadership as they conduct this evening's meeting. Guide them to make the very best decisions for our WISD students, staff, and community. May they do all this for your honor and glory. This we pray in your holy name. Amen, amen. Thank you. Item four, Pledge of Allegiance, Texas Pledge. Dr. Coronado. Uh, Mr. Carlos Rebello, please. All right, well tonight we'd like to introduce a couple of students from Airport Drive Elementary. If they could please stand up, please, over here. Young ladies. First, we have Evelyn Gomez, who is the daughter of Juan Gomez and Lupita, Lupita Viela. She is a fifth grader at Airport Drive Elementary School. Evelyn is a member of the Airport Skycat Choir. She is preparing for the District Science Fair Mechanical Engineering category. Last year, Evelyn earned a master's on her fourth grade star reading. Participating? Participating. Which for? The science fair, okay. So she's participating in the district science fair part, the mechanical engineering category, correct? All right. Now last year, Evelyn earned masters on her fourth grade star reading and math test. In her spare time, she likes to read and play with her dogs. Evelyn would like to attend Stanford University in California to study both mechanical engineering and business. How about a big hand for Miss Evelyn Gomez? And if her parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents, are you here? <laughs> also with us tonight, we have Emily Mata de la Mora, and she is the daughter of Omar Mata and Blanca de la Mora Mata. She is also a fifth grader at airport. Last year, Emily earned a master's on her fourth grade star reading and math test as well. Emily enjoys reading, playing piano, and spending time with her family and friends. She is also a member of the Airport Skycat Choir and is part of a hockey team. That's right, hockey team, I said. When she grows up, she wants to become a doctor, and she plans to attend UTRGV. 
How about a big hand for Miss Emily Mata de la Mora. <laughs> parents, can you please stand to be recognized for parents? <laughs> Will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance followed by the Texas Pledge. All right, we got the flag over there. And whenever you're ready, go ahead and lead us, okay? The same time. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, item five, awards and recognition. Dr. Gordon. Uh, board President, members of the board, uh, Mr. Carlos Rebelo, please. All right, members of the board, we would like to uh, congratulate several of our students as we are now in November, getting through our uh, first semester, first half of the year, and almost through another six weeks. So first, we'd like to congratulate one of our FFA 4-H students. Can you have a bit, how about a big hand as she enters the room? Tonight, we want to congratulate sophomore from West Laco High School who recently won first place at the FFA 4-H State Fair of Texas held in Dallas. Cora Ford is a state champion of the Swine Skillathon, beating over 30 students from across the state of Texas. The competition included a written test and a skills section. Several West Laco students in the past had advanced to finals for this competition before, but this time one of our students wins this prestigious state title. How about a big hand for Cora Ford? We also want to congratulate her ag teacher, Mr. Juan Cadena. And if Cora Ford's parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents? Up next, we have some uh, students, student athletes who have done well academically, and these are all academic members of the state. So how about a big hand as they enter the room here? Tonight, we want to congratulate several high school athletes who were recently named on the academic all-state teams. These academic all-state lists recognize high school athletes for their academic excellence in GPA, class ranked, and ACT, SAT scores. We honor these students who perform with that highest academic excellence on and off the field or the court. And as I say your name, if you can please step forward so you can be recognized. We'll start off first from West Local High School. In girls cross country, receiving all state academic honorable mention is Lexi Escamilla. And we want to recognize her head coach, Pablo Almaguer. Coach. In boys cross country, receiving all state academic second team is Jose Javier Fuentes. And we want to recognize his head coach, Juan Davila. In volleyball, receiving All-State Academic second team is Mireya Alonso. And we'd like to recognize her head coach, Alexis Valle. From West Laco East High School in girls cross country, receiving All-State Academic second team, we have Raven Ozuna. And we'd like to recognize her head coach, Joshua Davis. Coach Davis. 
In volleyball, receiving all-state academic second team is um, Caressa Perez. <laughs> Head coach, Zonia Gorena. <laughs> and we'd also like to recognize their parents. If their parents are here, can they please stand and be recognized? Parents. Thank you very much. Congratulations. You may exit this way. Job well done. Congratulations. All right. We'd like to recognize another individual. This is an athlete from West Lacoise High School, cross country team. How about a big hand as he enters the room? Tonight, we want to congratulate a freshman from West Laquise High School. This athlete recently won the District 32 5A Cross Country Individual Championship. He went up against runners from Donna, Harlingen, Ed Couchelsa, Brownsville, and Mercedes, coming in first place with a time of 1537 on the 5K course. Congratulations goes out to Aaron Nava. We also want to let you know that Aaron led his team to a second place finish overall, and he was named first team all district. Aaron was also named District 32-5A MVP. We also want to recognize his coach, Tom Owens from West Laco East. And how about a big hand for his parents? His parents of Aaron Novak, can please stand and be recognized. Congratulations, Aaron. Boy, Aaron. Congratulations. Mr. Trevino, can you stand over here? We have a special announcement for you. All right. So tonight we want to celebrate one of our administrators, West Laco ISD Assessment and Accountability Director, Elias Trevino, is this year's recipient of the 2022 Bilingual Educator Award. Trevino's longtime work with our bilingual students and programs has not gone unnoticed. His continued support of bilingual education has had an immeasurable impact on our bilingual students and their parents. Mr. Trevino will be a guest of honor during the annual R Rio Grande Valley Texas Association for Bilingual Education Conference to be held at South Padre Island in January. RGV Tabe is a nonprofit organization that advocates for bilingual and bicultural education throughout Region 1. Congratulations, Mr. Trevino. Congratulations, Leah. All right. Do we have our employee of the month here? So tonight we want to recognize the A-plus Employee of the Month for October. As the parent specialist for her campus, this individual has quietly worked behind the scenes for the past 20 years. With her continued community outreach, she has assembled a formidable core of stakeholders who will gladly pitch in whenever needed at Margo Elementary. Whether it is for the fall festival, student assembly, or just the day-to-day -day operations of the school, or the Veterans Day celebration, right? Her loyal crew are there to assist in any capacity as needed. This individual was also instrumental in the Lever Recovery Program, successfully bringing students back to complete their education at West Laco ISD. From Dr. R.E. Margo Elementary, Rosie Ariaga is the recipient of the WISD a Employee of the Month Award. Congratulations. Congratulations. That concludes our awards recognition. Thank you, Carlos. Item six, public comments? We have none. Thank you. 
Item seven, superintendent's report, Dr. Coronel. Uh, board president and members of the board, I just want to kind of briefly go over uh, just a few things uh, in my report today. Um, we can bring that up. I, I do want to say that uh, I, I, I enjoy seeing um, our students and staff being recognized at the board meetings. They, they, their work is, uh, is truly special and uh, it, it's, it's an honor to represent um, Westlaco ISD and, and there's a reason why, why we're the only choice. Um, I do want to start, we've been getting a lot of, or earning a lot of grants um, lately um, and so um, started keeping track of all of the, what I consider other people's money um, and besides our own taxpayer money. So these are outside grants that we have received thus far and, and what you'll see is pending on, on the bottom. Um, we just found out earlier this week that uh, there was a formula grant from TEA, school safety grant, that our district will be receiving 721000 uh, just over $721,000. So that one's brand new. And then, um, we, we, of course, the JET grant is on there, the COPS grant is on there for $300,000. So. Um, just, just since I've been here, uh, we've gotten, we've received just over $5 million in grants in the last six months, um, which I think is a credit to a great team because it takes all, all of them to put all of this stuff together. And then on below, you'll see what's pending. Um, we, we, we are one of 40, um, we will hopefully will be one of 40, there will be 40 grants of the $15 million for the full service community schools federal grant. Uh, 40 uh, communities will be um, receiving that one. We should get some notification, hopefully around December. Um, National School Lunch Program equipment, uh, we, we're asking for about 1.1 million. We'll see what happens with that one. Um, we have an LED lighting grant for about $150,000. Uh, silent Panic Alert Technology, that, that grant's about $37,000. And then a 3M e-film. Now the 3M e-film grant, uh, we've applied for through Region 1 and 3M. Uh, and that is window film that actually is designed for energy savings. However, it is bullet resistant. Uh, so we're, we're, we're hopefully we'll get some word on, on that one. So I just wanted to give uh, the board an update in terms of where we're at um, going after um, additional funding outside of, of our state allotment and, and, and our federal allotment. So um, our COVID counts, uh, we, we seen, we're seeing a, a, a drop. Again, but you know, we anticipate if, if there are some historic trends, both with COVID and flu, uh, we know we have a week in Thanksgiving next week, and then we also have two weeks in Christmas. So we anticipate a spike, and, and we'll talk about that just a little bit more later on in the agenda. But right now, we're pretty stable um, with um, both COVID, and then you'll also see the, um, the, the flu. The state is really monitoring this, um, and we report this um, um, frequently. And, and I, I want to say that, that Susan Kaufman over at uh, our, our, our district nurse is, is doing a great job keeping this uh, close an eye on this. Here's our enrollment. Um, again, our enrollment uh, again is is trending upwards again. Um, you know, even though it's after snapshot, uh, but we, we're we continue to climb. Um, I, I'm really hoping that we can get at least close to 17,000 by the end of the year. Uh, we need to work on our ADA, and, and there's some things in the compensation plan that I'll discuss in terms of a, a, an idea. Um, so we're, we're, our projections are a little lower than we wanted um, in our ADA, uh, but we'll work on that. So um, this is really a nice piece here. I know that um, um, I want to give credit to uh, the folks at KWES. Um, I think we're going to, I don't know if you cut this down just a little bit, but um, so just as kind of a brief, I sent it to you earlier, but for the, for the public, if we can just show just a little bit, it's on our link. Um, and uh, I, I would tell you that it's, um, I showed it to my mother and my sisters and my mom started crying. So. Um, I don't know if she was crying because she felt sorry for me. Or she's crying because she's proud of me. Um, so, uh, but uh, I think it's a really good video um, or a piece that, that KOS is doing where 
already some businesses have asked to be part of this here in, in Westlaco, so I, I think it's really interesting. It was a fun shoot. Hi, I'm the new superintendent for Westlake ISD, Dr. Dino Coronado, but you can call me Dino. I want to get to know the people of Westlake, and I want them to know me. It's important we are on the same page as we set the foundation for our children of Westlake for the next hundred years. So I'm visiting businesses, hosting town hall meetings, answering emails, and getting to know you. Westlake, let's talk. Hi, hi, Dino Coronado, Dr. Coronado. Dr. Coronado? Uh, yeah, I go by Dino, though. Dino, nice right. to meet you. I'm Adam Scheidler, I'm the owner of West Coast Daily Crown. Great place here. It smells great in here. Thank you. I hope it smells <laughs> like good coffee. So let me show you around a little bit. Okay. Wow, this place is amazing. The aroma of coffee permeates the air. Students and members of the community is hanging out, drinking coffee, studying, or just getting some work done. It's really a cool atmosphere. What I really like is the way Adam Scheidler celebrates veterans and civil servants with his honor cabinet. Here we find memorabilia of challenge coins and other unique items to recognize those in uniform. I probably need to donate some things too. You know, one of the reasons I, I that Wesico um, kind of appealed to me was uh, my father was born and raised here. I thought it was very special when I got the when I got offered the position. A week after um, I was named the lone finalist, my father passed away. Um, but uh, I was able to come down here and I went through the records place. I found his registration card, uh, have a picture of my dad when he was in, at, at Horton uh, Elementary. And I think it was elementary back then. He looked a little older, but uh, <laughs> Uh, so it's very special. So I've always felt that um, I've come full circle to come down here in Westlaco to serve um, as the superintendent of schools um, in a district where my father went to school, grew up and walked these streets, you know, uh, I think is really special. Uh, talked to my aunt and uh, my dad used to work at Kino's, I, I guess making bread. I guess that's a special treat around here. I need to visit that place. Board members, uh, again, subject to your questions, again, and just uh, kudos to the K-West team. Um, it's, it's a really good shoot. I uh, uh, really enjoyed it, uh, doing it and, and hope to see some other businesses as well. So subject to your questions, um, that concludes my superintendent's report. That's, that was a good, uh, a good production, and I'm, I'm sure you'll be doing so, something similar when you visit uh, campuses and uh, school events and stuff so that we can keep promoting and, 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 and show the uh, all the positive growth that uh, we, we have, not only in Westville, but our, our school district and all the great things that are, that are taking place that, um, that we're very proud of, so. Uh, A lot to be proud of, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any, anybody also, else? On the, on the grants, what a number of grants that the school district is uh, receiving, which uh, will be helpful for the next couple of years. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Let the record reflect that Dr. Jaime Rodriguez joined their meeting at 6.01. Thank you, Dr. Coronado. And now we'll go to the consent agenda, item eight. Um, we'll have trustees look at the uh, items there. And then I'll ask to see if there's anything you'd like to pull.
Okay. Mr. Nieto? None. Mr. Steiter? None. Coach Trevino? None. Dr. Rodriguez? I have none, Coach. And I have none. Do we have a motion to accept the... Um, motion to approve the consent. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Dr. Jaime Rodriguez. Second. And second by Mrs. Jackie Sustaita. Any discussion? Take it to a vote. Signify your approval by saying aye when I call your name. Mr. Nieto. Aye. Mrs. Sustaita. Aye. Costa Aye. Dr. Rodriguez. Aye. Motion carries. We now go to... Item nine, discussion items. A, interim financial report for the four months ended October 31st, 2022, Dr. Coronado. Excuse me, uh, board president, members of the board, again, the last uh, four months, I think financially we're doing, uh, we're, we're on track. Uh, financially, uh, we're actually doing very well. Um, subject to your questions for the financial report. No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, item B, presentation by Purdue, Brandon, Fielder, Collins, and Mott, LLP, delinquent tax attorneys, firm of the delinquent tax collection activity, report for the period from September 1st, 2021 to June 30, 2022. Dr. Goodenow. Uh Members of the board and, and uh, uh, board president, we have a, a presentation um, um, from Purdue, Brandon, Fielder, Collins, and Mott. So I'd like to turn this over to them. Good evening, Dr. Coronado, President Cuellar, and honorable members of the board. Uh, first of all, for the record, my name is Hiram Gutierrez, partner with Purdue, Brandon Fielder, Collins & Mott, your delinquent tax firm. And I'd like to take the time to introduce a new attorney with our firm, uh, Janelle Casa, who joined us just a little half a year ago. Um, and uh, I'd like to also take the time to congratulate uh, Mr. Dr. Rodriguez, President Cuellar and Mr. Nieto on your re-election. Uh, I'm here Thank to you. present you with your fiscal delinquent tax collections for the 2021-22 tax year, uh, that being the period of uh, September 1st through June 30th, uh, 31st of, uh, of this year. I want to point out that this is a 10-month collection report as opposed to your usual 12-month collection. As you may recall, you change your fiscal year to June through July from the uh, uh, September through August. Um, first of all, our collection program for West Oak ISD is designed with an emphasis on working with taxpayer to resolve their delinquent tax problem. And to that end, uh, our local call center has handled over 50, uh, approximately 5,500 contacts involving delinquent tax accounts here in West Oak ISD. We also have mailed over 6,500 letters informing their taxpayers of their delinquent taxes. Uh, we also, when the letters come back uh, un, uh, undeliverable, we uh, do uh, additional research. During this period, we have updated 950 addresses. In addition um, to uh, phone contacts and letters, we also try to contact taxpayers at, the, uh, at, their, at their homes or places of business. And uh, during this period, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> apologize for that. During this period, we have conducted 240 field inspections. Once we contact the taxpayers, we're not always able to get payment in full, so we do enter into payment agreements with taxpayers. During this period, we have entered into 28 payment agreements uh, involving over $84,000 in base tax owed to West Laco ISD. And of course, we try to avoid litigation at, at all possible. Uh, litigation adds additional costs, court costs, uh, abstract fees, uh, service to the taxpayers. So we avoid that if at all possible. But uh, if we have no, uh, if the uh, visits, the uh, phone calls, and the letters don't have the desired effect, we do enter into litigation. During this period, we have filed 77 suits involving over $649,000 in base tax owed to West Laco ISD. We also represent you in federal court, uh, mainly in bankruptcy. During this period, we also uh, filed 
I'm sorry, 14 bankruptcy claims on behalf of Westlaco ISD involving over $17,000 owed in base tax owed to Westlaco ISD. We also represent you in federal forfeitures, but we have no federal forfeitures to report at this, at this time. Once we take a judgment against, uh, against the taxpayer, we can proceed to tax sale. However, even after a judgment is taken, we still try to work with taxpayers, still try to get them to come in and pay the taxes if possible. Uh, we put out signs on the property that we're getting ready to sell. We send letters. We try to make phone contacts. Uh, however, the uh, taxpayer or nobody comes forward to try to save the property, we do proceed to tax sales. Uh, during this period, we posted 11 properties for tax sale. The result of those uh, prop 11 properties that were posted, two resulted in payments in full involving over $12,880 in base tax owed to the school district. Nine were sold, bringing in over $45,000 in base tax owed to the school district. Now, once we put up a property up for tax sale, sometimes they do not sell. There's, uh, there's no winning bid. When that happens, the property is struck off to the taxing entities. Essentially, the taxing entities become the owners of the property. Uh, during this property, we posted six properties up for tax resale. Uh, those uh, uh, properties, six of them were sold, bringing over $47,000 in base tax owed to the school district. Of course, all of the work that we do for the school district is geared to one goal, and that is to collect your delinquent taxes. And we can report that during this period, this 10-month period, we collected over $816,000 in base tax and an additional $397,000 in penalties and interest owed to the school district for a grand total of $1,214,000 owed to the school district. In addition to the delinquent tax collections, we also represent the, uh, the uh, school district in audits. That is, we audit the tax roll for the school district. If, uh, if it favors the school district, then we present it to the Texas Comptroller, and which usually results in additional state funding. Uh, during this period, we filed two audits for the school district, one for the 2019 tax year, which brought in over $604,000 in additional state aid to the school district, and another audit for the 2020 tax year that brought in approximately $66,000 owed to the school district. With that, I close my presentation, and I'd like to open it up for any questions you may have. How has the collection been after COVID? Since in COVID, it was a little slow because of, of course, different uh, scenarios. How has it progressed in the last few months or this past year? Yeah, <clears throat> collections are, are picking up, Mr. Nieto, and uh, uh, you know, COVID did have a, a, a negative impact on collections Correct. the first year, uh, but things have picked up since then. And uh, we're expecting the, the numbers will be favorable. I will tell you that despite the COVID, uh, the, your, your delinquent tax roll continues to decrease. Um, and uh, so it's, it's not you know, significantly growing. Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, West Laco ISD is in very good shape. Thank you. Board President, I do have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, Hi there. Yes, Dr. Uh, you, you had mentioned a property value audit. Um, yes. And I understand you can go back multiple years, but um, so are we pretty current with that? I mean, the amount that you gave uh, or, or disclosed uh, t tells me that there wasn't a lot of challenges on property valuations or? It, yeah, as you can see for this, this most current year, we, we, uh, we, we didn't see a, a, a significant uh, imp uh, in, in, uh, in doing an audit, it wasn't a significant increase. As you can see, 2019, right. it was $604,000. 2020, is 66000 You can go three years back, so we will be able to look back another year at 2020. Uh, it, in this coming year, we'll be able to look again at 2020. Have there been any changes that affected the 2020 tax year that we can go back to the state and say, okay, West Laco ISD is owed additional money for the 2020. So it's it's... It's not over for 2020, but as far as the audit that we've done already completed, is $66,000. Okay, thank you. Have you um, kind of got an idea of what the growth, I was reading the paper where we're seeing a lot of growth in Westlake over 
we're having a lot of residential places put up, a lot of apartments and so forth. How, how do you see that being a, a benefit to, uh, to the school district? Well, um, obviously that, that, that affects your current tax role. Uh, I, I work with the delinquent tax role as far as that portion of it. Uh, we, your, uh, West Oak YSD is, taxpayers are becoming more diligent about paying on time. So uh, I, I don't see more people going delinquent, especially, especially apartment complexes. I mean, those, they typically don't go delinquent. Uh, newer homes usually have a mortgage, have an escrow account. They don't go delinquent. It's usually the older properties, businesses. They're the ones that tend to more, you know, businesses, that, properties that are already paid off. Those are the ones that tend to go delinquent. Uh, your newer homes, they don't go delinquent. Apartments, I mean, it does happen every now and then, but it, typically you don't see them go delinquent. Of course, it, hel it helps your, your current tax roll, your tax levy. So it's a positive thing, obviously, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and then we just to kind of just throw out there that, uh, you know, things look, look, look good in spite of uh, back. We still have some ab abandoned property, especially after those floods. Right. Um, that has stopped pr pr pretty much. Right. I mean, th 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 those homes that were abandoned, what were they sold or what, what happened to that? Yeah. Well, that, that's you know, that's what you're seeing here. Properties that we sold recently. That's some of that properties. Usually it's properties that are abandoned people that are living there. You, you know, you. Those people are going to come forward. They're going to try to make arrangements. If they can't pay in full, they're going to make arrangements. A lot of folks were able to get uh, grants from the from the uh, from the state to help them pay with their delinquency. You had a lot of that. That was very helpful for your taxpayers. So it it's it's those properties, those abandoned properties. Those are the ones we're looking for. You know, we're working with the, closely with the city, identifying properties of, that they're having issues that they're doing condemnations on. And you know, it, they come and tell us, okay, look, we're, we're gonna condemn, do they owe any taxes? And we'll work with them. If they owe taxes, we'll try to expedite the foreclosure process and sell it if no one's coming forward. So uh, we're, we're trying to do everything we can to uh, attack that problem. And, and again, if somebody wants to save their property, we're gonna work with them. If, there, if there's no one interested, vacant lots, things like that, we're going to move forward as quickly as possible and get those properties back on the tax roll. Thank you for that. Any more questions? Do you have more to present? No, that, that's all my presentation. <laughs> Any more questions? No. no? Thank you, Mr. Gustavo. Thank you very much, Thank and again, you. congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Item C, update on training, conferences, events, and consider future agenda item request by board member. Dr. Coronel. Uh Board president, members of the board, uh, I had emailed you all um, just some, um, I, I thought about having a, a, a board retreat um, to, to finish our hours. Um, so I, I'm, I'm gonna give you some dates here real fast. Um, and then if you could just let me know uh, you know, within the next week or so, so we can start making arrangements. But uh, we looked around, um, and we're looking at um, January 6th through the 9th, January 20th through the 22nd, or March 3rd through the 5th. I'll say that again. January 6th through the 9th, the 20th through the 22nd, or March 3rd through the 5th. Um, but those would be the uh, potential retreat dates. Again, it would start uh, Friday evening, and it would end Sunday at noon. But uh, by then, we can, uh, uh, once I know the dates, we can lock in the location and then start the, getting the trainers involved. Um, and then we can all pretty much be done with, actually, you'd be done for the year. Um, there is the NSBA um, in early April as well that, that I think three of you, I think, are already attending or signed up to attend that. Um, so uh, but that's that's all I have subject to to your input um, on this item uh, in, in terms of every year I believe we have a uh, a workshop in December for team of eight uh, training team training mm -hmm. is that gonna take place anytime around that uh, month or well we, we can do that in, in December as a workshop um, or training, or we, and we can do the retreat and then just have everything done okay. in that weekend. And that way we're there, we're kind of, we're, um, 
kind of locked in for, <laughs> for, uh, for a couple of days. For a couple of days, you know, sequestered, so to speak. Um, but then we, we get done for the year. Okay. So there's no more trying to finish classes at the last minute and so forth. But it's, it's an opportunity for really, um, we, we are getting ready to issue uh, an RFP for um, a strategic, long range strategic plan, West Laco ISD Focus 2030. Um, and so um, with that, what comes with that are some focus groups. Um, and there's going to be an opportunity for the board to kind of set the direction as well um, for how we move forward to, to 2030. As, uh, so we're, we usually a third party does that um, uh, because because of the focus groups that they do with with everybody and they kind of assemble it. Um, but uh, we, we probably need to get moving on on that part of it as well. So but that should go out. Um, I think it's ready to go out. I reviewed it um, this afternoon. Hopefully December we should have something. Um, to bring to you on December 13th. And your requests also from us, like what topics we would like to have presented? Yes, retreat, absolutely. Plus any other ones that we need to. Right. Yeah. You, you, we'll do the required ones and then okay. the ones you want. Okay. okay. Uh, I just wanted to bring up a future item request, or maybe not an item, but just to look into. I received some concerns uh, from several parents about playground equipment. Uh, you, there's some, a couple of... Uh, schools out there that need some repairs on their playgrounds. So if we can look into that, and, and I know for sure one of them was Memorial that I heard about. So, I, you there, know, those There are kids. seven, I believe it's seven. We did it today. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes, um, we did it today. And right now the, the quote is about a half a million dollars Okay. Um, for all that. I just got to find the money. So I, I'm trying to find a playground grant. That's what, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that Lowe's and Home Depot sometimes offer competitive grants as well. Um, but uh, we, we actually discussed it today during our, our district leadership team meeting. Okay, that's good because yeah. it's about the kids. Yes. So for sure. We, okay. And the other thing is, is now that we've offered, now that we offer um, pre-K-3, mm -hmm. we actually have to have different playground equipment for okay. them. Um, so we're starting to, to acknowledge that we may need more than the half a million dollars. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Who's, who's responsible for, for looking at that doctor, for, for upkeeping, for maintaining, for making sure? Because I did see pictures. Yeah, of the slides, slides, are, that, slides are, that are broken cut and, open and, and cut open. Yeah. So our, 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 are hazardous to kids yeah, right our now. custodians and our maintenance folks do that. So they, the principal can file a report or just make a phone call typically. Uh, just establish a work order, um, and then and they'll go out and look at it. If, in the case of the slide, um, there's really probably no repair, especially if it's plastic, so we just take it out. Uh, but we really need to, to look at our playground equipment uh, across. Uh, I, and I'm not sure, uh, again, have, having not been here a year, um, if it's just seasonal, you know, for wear and tear, weather, in, in terms of a timing of when to replace some of that yeah. stuff. And, and but, uh, but we can look at all that. Okay. <coughs> okay, let's move forward to item 10, discussing the possible action items. A, discussing the possible action for the board to consider approval of a resolution allowing wage payments to district employees during potential district closings for the remainder of the 2022-2023 school year due to inclement weather conditions or high illness rates, Dr. Coronel? Uh, board President, members of the board, this is a proactive approach. What this does, this resolution allows the district to do is in the event of an outbreak in uh, another pandemic, uh, the flu, for example, um, or a weather-related um, closure, this allows us to continue to pay teachers without them making up the day. So we're just getting ahead of it and being a little proactive. Normally the resolution comes after we already do it. Right. Um, so we just wanna do it now. Uh, thinking that January, February, could we could be in for, you know, some seasonal issues, um, and so we just want to be a proactive approach, so we can continue to pay our employees. So that's all, all employees, not just necessarily. That's all teachers. employees, right? Okay. All full-time employees. Okay. Make a motion to approve. Okay, second. we have a motion by Mrs. Jackie Sosaita to approve. Second. And a second by Mr. Nieto to consider the approval of a, a, of a resolution allowing wage payments to the district employees during. Potential district closings for the remainder of the 2022-2023 school year due to inclement weather conditions or high illness rates. Do we have any discussion? Mm -hmm. huh? Let's take it to a vote. Signify your approval by saying I want to call your name. Mr. Nieto? 
Aye. You start that? Aye. Post the Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. Motion carries. Item B, discussion and possible action for the board to consider approval of a revision of the 2022-2023 ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 recruiting and retention stipend. Dr. Coronel. Uh, board President, members of the board, this, has, uh, this adds the language to full-time employees. Um, so uh, the first round of uh, ESSER is due to go out December 9th um, in the amount of 2,500 for all, and again, I'll add the full-time employees. Um, and this uh, ESSER stipend was approved previously, but we wanted to add the language full-time employees. Um, and that's um, with the, I know that last time that we talked, um, it was, there, there were some exceptions, um, but uh, now this is all full-time employees with the exception of, of myself, the superintendent, unless you choose that you want to give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm I'm a full time employee, but that but right now we're we're adding the all full time employees. So move to approve. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Nieto. Second, and a second by Dr. Rodriguez Just to um, yeah. consider the approval of a revision of the 2022-2023 ESSER two and ESSER three recruiting and retention stipend. Do we have any discussion? My only uh, thought is the people who are working part-time, the part-time custodians, part-time, they get nothing at all then, right? Zero, because obviously they're not full-time. That's correct. Did they get it last year when we said it was full-time? It was only full-time last year? Maybe, and that's a good point by Ms. Jackie there, because yes, a lot of them don't get anything, but if we can see, once we look at all the ESSER funds, if we have availability, you know, that maybe we can do something for them? Just food for thought. So, so here's what I could, could offer, um, and, uh, or we can discuss, uh, okay. I guess. Uh, based on the number of days and whatever that target is for our, for example, we can say if you're a part-time employee and you worked X amount of hours or X amount of days, then you would receive a, a, a partial stipend at the end of the year. That, that, um, if, if that's, if, so when we pay out the, the second half of the 5,000, right. um, so what we don't want to do is, is put ourselves in a position where we're paying uh, an ESSER stipend in advance Correct. and then, okay, well, I'm done working now. Right. right? right. So right. with a part-time employee, at least there's an incentive for them to stay all year. Okay. So we can look at that and, and we can look at what that amount can be if you'd like. So yes. for, for clarification, because a lot of times teachers ask, you know, the stipend, December the 9th, is 2500 correct? That's, yes. And then all employees. Full -time. All full-time, yes. All okay. full-time employees except the superintendent, which you guys, I noticed, didn't add that or had a discussion, <laughs> but that's okay. Well, well so, so, so that way teachers know, <laughs> understand that it's full-time employees, and they're going to get it December 9th, and, of course, in May or June. June, uh, June, I think, June payday is when they get the okay. second. Uh, so, uh, so that way they don't have to read the fine print, and he's clarifying it right here live for those that are listening, because a lot of times they want to hear it. They don't want to read it. Yes. You know, they, so FYI. Okay. What? And we'll look into the part. Now, and we'll look into the part. Now that Dr. Kornar brought it up, uh, why, why, why would, would you be excluded? I, I, Are there I, any exceptions for, uh, for, for that? Or? No, it, it's up to the board. Typically, for my, my contract uh, basically says that it's up to the board. Um, and so, um, you know, any, my, my contract is the only contract in the district that has a salary amount in it. Mm -hmm. so, so naturally, you would, have, um, you would have to, I guess, agree to add to that. You Correct. Know? Um, but so I can amend the motion to uh, uh, add Dr. Dino. Uh, to the retention stipend uh, also. And I'll second that. And we, we have a motion by Mr. Nieto, second by Dr. Rodriguez to add the uh, uh, retention stipend. To the superintendent. The, for the superintendent. Yep. Okay. Um, do we have that verbiage in there? No. You can't hear, Coach. We can't. No. Okay. I was in a in a relaxed mode to come back. So, no, the Mr. Nieto uh, amended the motion. Reworded the motion to include Dr. Coronado in that uh, retention stipend, second by uh, Dr. Rodriguez. Is that allowable? That's fine. 
Yes. Okay. Now, given that, do we have any discussion? No. Okay. The, the other thing I had brought up along the line of the part-time employee was permanent subs. So, so I know permanent subs, if we have any permanent subs working X amount of days, uh, you know, that, that would be good. I don't know if we can set up a, a cutoff as well for them. So they fall in the same as part-time employees because mm -hmm. they can only work 17 days per month. So they're still okay. considered, right. even though they're full-time subs, they're considered part-time. So what we can do is we can track or monitor the number of days or hours that all of our part-time uh, workers, and then when in come June, um, I think we'll have I, I think we'll have a really good idea of where we're at financially, and then offer an amount Great. that I bring to the board. Okay, whatever whatever's fair, you know. Okay. We want to take care of all of them. Yes, sir. Okay, Marcos, you you can let the record reflect that Mr. Los Santos joined the meeting at six thirty. Mm -hmm. um, but did anybody, I just want to verify for next year, because I know we did the stipend for this one. We do have it in the planning and the books for next year's stipend as well? Yes. Okay, it's already budgeted? Yes. All right, perfect. Yep. 22, 22. Okay, and then uh, we were taking care of everyone, ex excluding the superintendent, and I just asked, you know, is there a reason why we're going to exclude him, or should we include him in there? And we re reworded the motion to, to have him, uh, you know, be treated just like everybody else. He's, he's part of the team. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I brought it up for discussion now, and, uh, and now we're going to take it to a vote. Unless you have something you want to add, Mr. No. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey. He looked at me like, what are you going to okay. say? <laughs> With that being no, said, no. let's take it to a vote. Signify your approval. Saying I'm going to call your name. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Ms. Taita? Aye. Costa de Vino? Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Motion carries. Item C. Discussion and possible action for the board to consider approval of updates. To the 2022-2023 Worcester ISD compensation plan, Dr. Lerner. Uh Board President, members of the board, we actually have five updates um, to um, the compensation plan, and, I, and real briefly, what um, what I'll kind of briefly just kind of go over them. Uh, we'd like to offer um, a $250 stipend for um, all employees for uh, that. Um, submit their retirement on or before 50, February 15th. Now, what, what we're trying to do really is get ahead of the recruiting um, season um, and by early notification, uh, I mean, if, if some folks already have in their mind that they're gonna retire, um, they can just go ahead and, and say, yes, I'll go ahead and submit my retirement and then we'll pay the $250. Uh, they were gonna retire anyway. Um, or if that, that, that um, we're not trying to push people out, we're just trying to get early notification so that we can get an idea of which needs we're going to have to recruit for. Um, the second one is the $5,200 stipend for the high school conjunto band sponsors. Um, there isn't a specific class for the conjunto, um, so what we wanna be able to do is add the $5,200 for them as, as an extra duty. Um, for, as an, and it's, that's in line with all other non-UIL sponsors. Okay. Um, the other one, and uh, as this previously previously discussed, is a three thousand dollar stipend um, to administrators assigned to interim positions. Um, in the event that we have a principal or a cabinet member or or some other position that we have to place into an interim, um, to, to have a three thousand dollar stipend, which is pretty standard um, when somebody is elevated without trying to renegotiate their pay. The 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 next one is the longevity stipend. Um, I, I just want to. Uh, this one seems to get the most confusion. Now, we have never had a longevity stipend in Westlaco ISD. So this is new, um, and this is something that, that I wanted to bring into our employees. Now, a longevity stipend means that you have maxed your, your pay grade amount, mm -hmm. right? So in other words, unless that max exceeds uh, so let's say we give a 3% pay raise, but you've already maxed out your pay grade. In theory, well, or technically, you will not receive a pay raise, even if it's across the board, unless it's a floating scale. But if it's still your max, if, if that's your max, then, then, you re then you're eligible for a longevity stipend based on the number of consecutive years in Westlaco ISD. So here's an example. 
and I'm going to try to do this w without, um, let's say a custodian gets maxed at, and I, I don't know offhand what they make. Let's say they're maxed at, at $30 an hour or let's say $40,000 a year. So they have maxed their pay raise and, or maxed their, their, their salary cap. Now, let's say as a board, we decide to go with a 3% or 5% pay raise, um, but their pay raise has already maxed out because of the salary, because their, their salary is capped based on that pay grade. So they would be eligible for that stipend. So they would get the $40,000 a year plus the stipend uh, depending on the number of years. So if it's 15 consecutive years and it's $500, and then if it's up to, I think it's 32, 32, 32 plus, then it's 1,000, 1,350. So that's how the longevity stipend works. Some, some folks were under the impression, well, I've been here for 25 years, I get the stipend. But that you have to have been maxed at your pay grade. So that's what the, that longevity stipend is. So all we did was clean up the language a little bit to make it easier. And, and I think the concern there is a lot of them, a lot of our employees don't know if they have maxed out already. That's correct. They don't know that. So you know, a lot of times those are the questions that maybe uh, you can meet with the principals and let the principals go back to the campus and explain that because it, it's important, you know? But uh, when I was principal and teaching, I didn't know if I had maxed out or not. I, I, I just followed everything they did, you know? Right. So anyway, okay. Okay, but, but the longevity stipend adds, it takes care of our employees that have been here for a long time. Correct. And that have maxed out. The next one uh, that we have is we'd like to add a position to, um, uh, to the compensation plan, and that's the student outreach specialist. Uh, so here's what we have been taking a hit on, on attendance. So I started, uh, I created an attendance task force. This attendance task force, um, and, and there's some districts have something similar, they, they call it uh, a variety of, of names. But uh, in our case, uh, we've, we've labeled it as the attendance task force. And typically it's a team of folks that actually get a caseload of students. Now, I, I did send out to principals. Now, just to be clear, there is a difference between truancy and chronic absenteeism. Truancy clearly is students um, who, who have uh, beyond the 90% rule, right? They're just, they're absent more, more than 10% of the year. Chronic abs and those are unexcused. Truancy is about unexcused absences. I wanna make that clear. Truancy is about unexcused absences. Mm -hmm. Chronic absenteeism is about people that have, or students that have, have not met the 90% rule. Excused, unexcused, UIL, in other words, they're out of the classroom, right? So if their time in the classroom is beyond 90%, right, they are considered chronic absenteeers, right? Because we get paid based on the, what you know the students the basically seat time right. and so we need to be able to address both now um, we we first need to find out you know as a former special ed teacher you know that we always called it I always remembered it as the ABC's which is the antecedent which is the trigger the behavior and the consequence all too often we focus on the behavior and the consequence without knowing why the student is not in school to begin with or why they're behaving in a manner that they're behaving. So we have to think about the why first. So the student outreach specialist, right, adds that component because they are the ones that find out why they're truant, why the chronic absenteeism, and they get a caseload. They'll be assigned based on, um, uh, on, on a number. So let's say they have a, a caseload of, of 100. Right now we have about 4,800 students, 4,800 students that are not meeting the 90% rule. So at every 1% of ADA, we are losing $1.5 million. So the idea here is, is to increase by at least 4% uh, to get us up to well over 95%. So if at 4% 4, at 4 we bring in about 6 million additional dollars um, with, the, with the SOS or the student outreach specialist, and that team will cost us about a half a million dollars with fringes, um, then it'll pay for itself. I had a question, uh, Mike. Uh, that I know that you emailed us and you told us about uh, adding those additional positions, but 
Uh, will this will these be new hires, or are we going to tap into like the resources, like the individuals that were repurposed? Would they fall into that program, or uh, you know, because I, I know that you didn't you didn't uh, get to that point yet, and I know in the email I don't think you discussed as far as salaries and costs and benefits and whatnot. But I know that we had a lot of staff that was that was repurposed out of you know out of the right. central office. Would they be tapped into as resources for that? Some of them? absolutely, and hopefully, what we're trying to do is to relieve some of our ESSER funding people that are in there. Um, oh, well. that they can slide into and now have permanent positions. Uh, I think the starting salary was 42000 and it goes up to $62,000. Uh, so it's a pretty competitive salary. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we want to create this team really, uh, one or two things is going to happen. Either the students are going to get into school, right, right and we're going to facilitate that, or, or we're, we're going to drop them. You, you know, and, and it's a huge, we're having a, a significant challenge right now um, with, with students coming to school. Um, and, and so one of the things that we're gonna be bringing to you in December, for example, is, is, a, is a, policy change, a policy change regarding transfers. Mm -hmm. Right now, principals, you know, the number one complaint of principals is that I, I, I can't do anything to facilitate um, my, uh, my, my student attendance. I don't have any teeth. Mm -hmm. And so there's three things that I always ask when, when there's an issue with the student. Even when you all bring me a student or a parent, I ask three questions. First one is, are they a transfer? Second thing is, what's their discipline? And the third one is, is how are their grades? And, and so and I call it a rap sheet. So principals need to have the authority to, to revoke a transfer at any given time. And right now, they don't have that authority. They have to wait a semester. In some cases, depending if it's inter or intra, right, they have to wait to the end of the year. That's true. So at this point, what we need to change is that they should be able to revoke the transfer right then and there and on the spot. Uh, we, it's a tool. I, I mean, as a principal, when I was a principal, I enjoyed my transfer kids because those were the best behaved kids. They knew that you can revoke that transfer in a minute, right? And they were going to be on their best behavior and the parents knew that as well. Um, and, and so, um, so we want to be able to at least find the, um, the root cause of why a student is not in school. Here's That's my really question simple. as a parent now, because in my scenario, and I'm just going to say, uh, my little one had the flu, right? She was out for many days. So I wasn't aware that I thought it was just COVID that the kids could do uh, virtual learning. Mm -hmm. But uh, they said, no, she has the flu. She's going to be out for a couple of days. She can still uh, do the Makeup. virtual. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So she's not counting absence. I said, great, right. awesome. What is our policy? Uh, for kids who are getting sick, not just the flu, COVID, but let's say they have a, I don't know, a strep throat, or you know, those, those sicknesses that keeps them out for days. Is there anything that we have where we can say your, your child can log in virtually and not lose those days? So we do have a remote option that at all of our campuses, um, depending on, uh, I guess, the reason why they're out and, and, and COVID related or flu related or illness related, absences are, are, are legitimate absences but we do have a remote learning option and i think it's uh, two hours on i think it's it's a total of four hours but at two hours they have See, to be live. i didn't even know that <laughs> yeah elementary and secondary so okay. we do have so we do so there are options you know we have a sassy program there, we have we have a, a, a lot of tools but what i want to be able what i want our attendance task force to be able to do is to reach out to those 4,800 students and say, hey, these are the options that you have to make up your hours, right? Mm -hmm. Because remember, once a student is beyond the 90% rule, all right, or they've, they're, they're past the 90% attendance rate, one of two things is gonna happen. Either, either they're not gonna earn credit or they're gonna be retained. You know, in the case of, of high school or secondary, mm -hmm. they're not gonna be able to earn credit, which means it puts them not on track to graduate. Um, at the elementary school, if, if they don't at least compensate or make up those hours, they could, they could be retained. So, so we want to make sure that, and the other thing, you know, at least for me, it's, it's still come, it boils down to really one thing, learning. Look at the learning that the students are missing when they're not in school. And, and so all we're trying to do is, is, is recapture, um, you, you know, yes, there's a financial impact, but really, Long term, it's about missed opportunities for learning, and, and that's what we're just trying to create and get those students back into our classrooms. Okay, so just Dark, to put it out there. There, there is, uh, and I'm going to say it, there is a lack of communication, though, because I know my daughter, 
was out. The same thing is she had the flu twice. And both times I got different answers as far as the first time it was like, oh, no, you have to be out two to three days in order to qualify for the online. <coughs> then I believe I asked yourself and you said, no, it should be mm -hmm. readily available. Right. So here we are. I mean, I drop my kid off every day or whatever. So I don't think that information is out there. So I think we're hurting ourselves on this ADA by not putting that information. Not to, I mean, we, that, that worksheet or some form of sheet or some form of memo should be going out every Friday to, 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 uh, to the parents, you know, through the kids so that they understand that, you know, over the weekend you get sick, uh, log in Monday. And, and I think right now, and, and, and again, I'm not trying to make excuses for our principals. You know, our, our principals are dealing with, you know, they're, they're dealing with a lot of stuff. That, you know, we start 2.0, the new accountability system and so forth, and our teachers are overwhelmed. Um, and, and I'm just really trying to create a task force so they don't have to worry about it and, and we can support them. You know, our, our job at central office is, is, is to, to support our campuses, get the kids in the building. Once they're in the building, the teachers got them in the classroom, right? And, and so, but I, I, I sir, you're, you're absolutely right. I think there's, there's been some communication breakdown and, and, um, and so we need to clarify that and hopefully with the task force, and when they reach out to these 4,800 students um, and, and meet with their parents, and it is an outreach. Um, it, it is, and they can at least, a lot of this is just about education. Some parents just didn't know about the 90% rule. Some people didn't know what was going on or, or how you can make up the hours. Um, and again, it's about learning. And, and not only do we have to educate our students, we also have to educate our parents, right, so that they understand it. And, and I think with this type of task force um, that, that we're creating, um, pending your approval, we can post this tomorrow, and by Christmas, we can have this team up and running and off the ground. So, how, um, how big would this team be, Doc? We're looking at 10 people. 10? Yeah, 10, 10 actual, I think, well, I think nine, a clerk, and then a leader. So, but we already have the leader, and then I think the office clerk or the administrative assistant that will support this, we may already have in house. Uh, but if not, we can always post that one. So. I like the idea of um, sorry. Uh, I like the idea of, of taking the responsibility and the workload off of our principals and and teachers and let them focus on on getting those yeah. kids back. Our, our teachers need to focus on yeah. teaching and learning and and they not chasing kids down. And and, and so. Dr. Dino, we had a similar task force in Harlingen, which worked very well, and it was a, a team, and it just happened that it was at the campus that I was at. So in the evenings, that we utilized that our our campus for parent meetings, students that needed to make up time uh, uh, certain days of the week. So that's, that's a good program. Uh, with that being said, and the point that uh, Cosme brought up, if we have students that have lost inst instruction or are uh, behind on the work be because of the lack of that opportunity to have done their, their work uh, online, are they gonna be allowed to make that work up and not lose uh, Whatever, oh, abs uh, absolutely. Yeah, by law, we have to offer that. Um, they, they have to have um, uh, a, a learning plan to come back in um, or an attendance plan. Um, so, but yeah, all that is part of that. Uh, again, it takes away, and I don't really want to say takes away from the campus, but, but we kind of do this for them uh, or assist them so that they can just focus in on the classroom. And I think that's the idea is, is I really want our teachers just I mean, they're the heart of the district, and I just really want them to focus. You know, once they get into their classroom, I want them to focus on the kids that are there. You know, let, 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 we need to be able to support getting the kids in there. Right. And so that, but that's the idea. Uh, but there are, we need to create those opportunities and educate not only our students, but our parents as well. So, and, and, then, uh, and then the last one is to add um, a, uh, a bookkeeper position under pay grade 306. So those are the major changes um, uh, this month <laughs> for, for, the, uh, for the compensation plan, subject to your questions. So move to approve the, the updates to the 2022-23 West Coast ISD compensation plan. Okay, Mr. Nieto has made a motion. A second. A second by Dr. Rodriguez. Any discussion? Doctor, what's that specialist bookkeeper position for? Um, it's to add uh, or to elevate a position in, uh, in finance. The business office. Okay. And I, I'm just looking at the student outreach specialist uh, job descriptions, uh -huh. and it says that the. Let me go back here. 
the salary to be established by the board of trustees but you did already did we already talk about that yeah that's you what's said in it was that's what's in here i, I want to say it's forty two thousand um starting and then it's up to sixty two thousand based on years of experience okay now will that uh position be a professional position it is uh okay. professional yes okay. So would this be like a contract employee, not will employee? What are we looking at here? It, they would have uh, whatever our non-chapter 21 contracts for. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a degree professional. It's a degree professional. Correct. Okay. Mark? All right. Are we ready to mm -hmm. move yeah. on this? Okay. Let's take it to a vote. Signify your approval by saying I'm going to call your name. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Ms. Taita? Aye. Costa Rivino? Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. And Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Motion carries. Item D. Discussion of possible action for the board to consider approval of a contract with Karswiski Bradshaw Spalding Attorney's Firm. I hope I said that right. Dr. Coronel? Uh, board President and members of the board, as, as we discussed, I, I, our, our principals um, had wanted some um, training, um, and we just need some um, external assistance um, for uh, employee relations. Um, so that's that's we're not replacing anybody. <laughs> uh, any, any, we're, it's just uh, outside uh, legal counsel, specifically for um, training um, and uh, our employee relations assistance. I move to approve. I have a motion by Dr. Rodriguez to approve. Do we have a second? Doctor, what would be the time frame that we would be looking at this for? Um, in, in terms of the training piece? Yes. Are we going to have them here for, uh, for it's two just, months, three months? Uh, it's actually um, it's days. Um, okay. so, we, so we'd like to do a, a scheduled training one day in December, and then there'll be about two or three days in January, and then that's it. We didn't have any local regional options? I mean. So I didn't, um, I, I didn't want anyone from um, no, uh, nothing against it. I didn't want anybody from the Valley. I, I wanted just an objective set of eyes. Um, just somebody really on the outside um, that looks at paper. Since this is kind of like, it, it goes with uh, legal information. And I know that, you know, by the end of the week, we're going to have a new board member whose expertise is in legal. Yep. I don't know if we should wait for I've that discussed person. this. I've discussed this okay. with him already. Because mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, I asked a specific question. Um, I, I, I did reach out to him already, um, and he, he was okay with it. It doesn't compete with, um, because it's a little bit, it's unique um, in what we're doing and, and how we're using them. And under, I understand your point, Dr. Dino, but I also understand, uh, Mr. Los Santos, where you mentioned uh, there's law firms here in the Valley that are capable, but I understand where you're coming from to be, uh, not to be biased, you know, uh, coming from out of the Valley. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my only concern. Yeah. I. I you know, I've learned here that um, somehow, some way, I, I, there are no secrets in the valley. Right. There are no secrets in in a school district, uh, clearly. And and so, what I was looking for, um, and and I, in and, and full disclosure, um, I, I worked with with this person specifically. Um, while I was in, in Houston ISD for similar work. Um, and so 
Um, so I, I'm used to what they're doing and what, the, what they bring to the table. But I really needed a, an objective approach, um, somebody that doesn't know anybody else, somebody that is unbiased, somebody that doesn't care what the politics are, Correct. doesn't care what um, the relationships are. And it's just really unbiased approach saying, sh you know, show me um, X, Y, and Z. This is what we show them, yes or no. And then, and, and, and so there's no, okay, because I, I know there's many times where, where I, at least for me, where I have to look at things, okay, uh, what's, I, I always ask myself, all right, is it legal? Is it ethical? Is it practical? What's the political impact of this decision? Right? And it's always, so in this case, the political impact of this decision, right? I needed, some, I needed someone from the outside that can give us an unbiased um, answer to any specific question. And, and that's why I'm, I'm bringing it to all of you. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and you mentioned you reached out to the, uh, the board member that's gonna come into uh, play on Friday. Yes, I did. I reached out because I wanted to know if you knew right. um, the, the specific person. And, can, uh, can we wait until we uh, he scored, is swore in, and then the following board? How quickly do you need? Because I would, I'll be, I'll be more at, e at ease where the new board members hear it and have has an opportunity to vote. No. Uh, say in the next board meeting, mm -hmm. would it be December? Yeah, the December? December board meeting. Would you be okay with that? I think it adds, it delays a month. I think our principals, what we wanted to do is give the, the, the principals uh, preparation uh, or training December right. 1st is what we wanted to do uh, so that they could bring in whatever they needed to do in January. So if we delayed this one month, right. then, then they would miss out on the training and then we would miss one month and, and probably push this into February, which that's really... Um, it's really pushing the timeline. But again, it, it's, I'll, I'll have to, uh, um, it, it, again, it's, 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 I'm recommending approval and, and it's, it's subject to your, your, your Are we decision. Gonna, when, when is our December meeting? Our December meeting is at the beginning of the December of the 13th. Month? The 13th? Yeah, and then we, and then three days later, basically we're gone. Right. We we do have we a meeting on Friday. For Friday. Mm -hmm. Oh, can we add it for Friday once he's already sworn in? We can have one agenda item. Can we can we table and have this an agenda item for for can Friday? We put it on Friday. Yeah, but there's already a motion. We'll see if it dies, and then somebody go ahead and. Well, we only have a. Yeah, nobody seconded okay. the motion. Okay. Nobody so, has seconded the motion. So I move, I move to table it, and oh. There's no there was no there second. Is no motion second. Okay, motion so, fails. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I move to table it for the next meeting, which will be Friday. Okay, I'll Mr. Second. Nieto has made a motion okay. to table this agenda item mm -hmm. for Friday. Correct. I'll second that. And a second by Mrs. Sustaita that on Friday we will bring back agenda item. item D. Mm -hmm. Correct. For board of uh, discussing a possible action. Okay. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's move now to, oh, and let's take it to a vote. Yes. <laughs> let's take that to a vote okay. and signify your approval by saying I want to call your name. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Ms. Saita? Aye. Costa de Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. And Mr. De Los Santos? Aye. Okay, that, that motion carries. Item E, discussing a possible action for the board to consider approval of the annual comprehensive financial report for the 10-month period ended June 30, 20. 22, Dr. Corona. Uh Board President and the members of the board, uh, again, uh, we just received an update on our financial audit, uh, and you have a copy of it, and then there was a revision um, on there. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to, to peruse that or to take a look at that. So the one here today was the Yes, most that's important. correct. For the uh, funding that, was, that wasn't spent, what kind of... Um, what kind of systems do we have in place so that, that we follow up? Because sometimes a department will get issued an amount of funds, you know, depending on the department. Yep. That goes out to principals and accounts. So what kind of systems are in place to maybe follow up? Is it, is it, is it at, the, at the central office level? Is it at the campus level? I mean, you don't have to answer that, but, but those are things that I'll, I'll be curious that maybe you can report to us later 
and say, okay, the, you know, these funds weren't spent because because maybe they need assistance, they need follow up, just a reminder, like, hey, you still have excess balance. Sometimes they don't even have access to those accounts, and uh, it just depends. It's different situations. I don't know what the situation is here, right? But um, just something to to look at. Well, you know, every month we give you a percentage right. of expenditures for the general budget. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think what we need to do um, is give you a percentage of expended budget um, by fund. Mm -hmm. um, because right now with, uh, with Mr. Sanchez, he only does our general funds. Right. Um, so what we really need to do is with our external funding is to, is to track and monitor, and, and, and that's, that's a good point. So um, at the next agenda, or from now on, on the monthly one, mm -hmm. I'll give the percentage of spent based on our external funding. So I, I, th I think that's the mechanism that we can use. And you know, a, a lot of times it's, it all depends on the director or the principal and their secretary, right. how well they're versed in how to spend the money. Right. Or you know, sometimes you, know, you do have a lot of money and you have to utilize it. Right. Uh, if not, it rolls over to the general fund. Right. Uh, most principals utilize the majority of the money per year. Maybe right. not as much during the pandemic because we didn't have students present, uh, but uh, yeah. That's if the, if the campus secretary or the director and their secretary, their secretary work well together, they, they do a, an awesome job. Yeah, that's a great point. The, cl the clarity on the unallowable and the allowables, and that yeah. way they can. I, I don't understand. It's something that I walked into since I've been here is that I don't know why we hang on to so much money. And, and so I, we get the money to spend it. Um, I'm not exactly sure why we don't spend what we spend. I know when I was a principal, I always told it, be broke before spring break. Correct. Yeah. Right? Correct. Always be broke before spring break yes. and just spend the money. And, and so I'm not exactly sure why we hang on to so much money because to me, it, it's money for kids. So let's spend it on kids. I agree. And, and so I, I but uh, it, I, it, it bothers me when, when we roll over um, that much money, uh, you know, especially the amount given. Um, and, and it's, consecutive years that we roll over money. I, um, I, I understand, yes, pandemic, I understand, I understand all those things, but those are opportunities for us to be creative with money as well. What ends up happening all too often is that, that if I, we should, every campus should have a SIP and the district has a dip. Why aren't we spending in accordance with that? You have to allocate um, your funding based on your, your SIP and your dip anyway. So, so I'm not exactly sure why, why we, we continue to, to hang on to money. I, I, I don't understand Tell it. the principals and their directors to spend their money, you know. And I think most principals do, mm -hmm. you know, because the majority of them, uh, well, being a former principals, you know, you utilize all the money that you could for students yeah. or, you know, or for whatever you need it for. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important. So I'll give you updates um, monthly, just okay. like we do with the other general fund. And I think your most experienced principals do spend their money. Oh, yeah. It's your more uh, inexperienced that, you know, sometimes are, are, you know, a little bit tentative, but your most experienced principals, uh, coaches, do spend their money. Oh, yeah. It's, I, know I did. I did. Because usually you know, in May, it's not, hey, we have extra money. Well, it, it went to the people that were broke. Exactly. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'll motion, I'll motion to, um, for approval, the annual comprehensive financial report for the 10 month period ending June 30th, 2022. Second. Okay, we have a, uh, a motion by Dr. Rodriguez and a second by no. Mr. Los Santos mm -hmm. for the uh, board to consider the approval of the annual comprehensive financial report for the 10 month period ending June 30th, 2022. <coughs> Do we have any discussion? No. Ready. Okay, before we vote, let the record reflect that Mrs. Uh, Sustaita left the meeting at 7.03. Mm -hmm. We will now. Take a vote. Signify your approval by saying aye. I'll call your name. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Costa Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Motion carries. Item F, discussion and possible action for the board to consider approval for the bus drive and teacher parking lot project at Westerco High School. CSP number 21-12-18 as follows. One, allowance expenditure authorizing AEA number two, for the change in scope of work needed. Two, liquidation damages and final completion of the project. And three, 
a change order for the unspent project contingency credit and delay days to complete the project. Dr. Coronel. Uh, board President, members of the board, um, this um, action item just allows for you to approve the completion of the bus drive and the teacher parking lot at West Laco High School. So move to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Nieto and a second by Mr. Los Santos. Now we're voting on everything that's on this agenda. One, two, three, right? Yes. Okay. To consider approval for the bus drive and teacher parking lot at Westlake High School, CSP number 21-12-18 as follows. One, allowance expenditure authorizing AEA. Number two, for the change in scope of work needed. Two, liquidated damages and final completion of the project. And three, a change order for the unspent project contingencies credit and delay days to complete the project. Do we have any discussion? If not, let's take it to a vote. Signify your approval with saying I want to call your name. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Costa de Vino? Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Motion carried. <coughs> Item 11. Closed meeting to discuss. A. Personnel matters. Texas Government Code 551.074. 1. Discussion regarding superintendent recommendation and certified professional personnel. 2. Discussion regarding superintendent recommendation on resignations retirements of certified professional personnel. Three, deliberation regarding the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee, Texas Government Code 551.074 and 551.071. A, discussion regarding superintendent's recommendation for the position of executive director for business and finance. B, discussion regarding superintendent's recommendation for the position of Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources, and B, consultation with attorney regarding A, pending or contemplated litigation, B, a settlement offer, or C, a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the Westlake ISD under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with the Chapter 551 of Texas Government Code, Texas Government Code 551.071. The time now is 7.07, .07, and we will go into closed session. The time now is 9.07, .07 and we have reconvened an open meeting. Item A, possible action if necessary, an item discussed in closed meeting. One, discussion and possible action regarding superintendent's recommendation on employment of certified professional personnel. Dr. Gordonell. Uh, board President, members of the board, I'd like to recommend uh, employment of the certified professional personnel as discussed in uh, closed session. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Los Santos to approve second. and a second by Mr. Nieto. Uh, do we have any discussion in the mind? No? Let's take it to a vote. Sir, uh, signify your approval by saying I want to call your name. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Costa Vino? Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. And Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Motion carries. Item two, discussion of possible action regarding superintendent recommendation on resignations, retirement of certified professional personnel. Dr. Coronel. A board president and members of the board, I'd like to recommend the re resignations and retirements of certified professional personnel as discussed in executive session. Move to approve. Okay, we have a motion by Dr. Rodriguez. Second. And a second by Mr. Los Santos. Any discussion? Take it to a vote. Signify your approval saying aye when I call your name. Mr. Nieto. Aye. Coach Trevino. Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. And Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Motion carries. Number three, discussion and possible action regarding superintendent recommendation for the position of executive director for business and finance. Dr. Lerner. Uh Board President, members of the board, I'd like to recommend David Robledo as the executive director for business and finance. Motion to approve. I have a motion by Mr. Los Santos? Second. And a second by Coach Trevino. Any discussion? Let's take it to a vote then. Signify your approval by saying aye when I call your name. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Costa Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. And Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Motion carries. Number four, discussion and possible action regarding superintendent's recommendation for the position of Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. Dr. No. Uh, board President and members of the board, I'd like to recommend uh, Juanita Ivara Rodriguez as the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. So move to approve. I have a motion by Mr. Nieto. Second. Second by Dr. I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Los Santos. Any discussion? Not. Let's take it to a vote. Signify your approval by saying I want to call your name. 
Mr. Nieto. Aye. Costarino. Aye. Dr. Rodriguez. Aye. And Mr. Dos Santos. Aye. Motion carries. We will now go to item 13 and go into closed meeting to conduct a level three grievance requested by DGARZA pursuant to West Dakota ISD policy DGBA local. Uh, board President, members of the board, I'd like to uh, be able to release the district leadership team um, uh, for the rest of the evening, uh, with the exception of Mr. Buttermer and Ms. Gomez. Have a good evening. The time now is 10.01, and we've reconvened to the open session. The board has reconvened an open session with regard to a level three grievance requested by Ms. Diana Garza, does any board member have a motion? I'll move to uphold the administration's level two decision. Second. Dr. Second. Rodriguez has moved to uphold the administration's mm -hmm. Second. Um, level two grievance, and Ms. Nieto seconds. Correct. Uh, do we need to discuss this any further? Okay, we'll take it to a vote then. Signify you approve by saying aye or no by saying or no by, or nay by, by saying no. Okay, Mr. Nieto? Aye. Costa de Vino. I'm gonna abstain. Abstain. All the inconsistencies, so. Okay, uh, Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Okay, motion carries to uphold the level two grievance. The time now is 10.03 and we are adjourned. It's before, it's before midnight. Yes, we'll see. Let's see, sir.